Hello and welcome to the oddest little podcast on the internet. What's going on? We are the Odd Pod. My name is Stacey Kroger. Who are you boys? I am casually challenged and I have opinions. No. You? I am Rad Hazard. What they said. I'm Robbie and I have opinions. Opinions. So you're like an ogre. <laughs> you're opinion my onions. <laughs> I'm Ryan. I don't have onions. Could you speak a little loud? Pull your throat out of your asshole and speak. No, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) (laughs) So pretty much nothing's happened this last week, guys. I mean, legitimately nothing's happened. Uh, There was no movies released. uh, No big games. We really have not much to talk about. So first off, uh, controls. uh, Controls. I stabbed a hooker. Do you have to hooker? What hook? I just stabbed a hooker this week. <laughs> but I thought that, that's were... your personal time, Robbie. We're not talking about that. <laughs> well, well, actually, something major did happen this weekend. Um, the Batmobile lost a wheel and Joker got away. No, again? Yeah. Shit. Son of a bitch. Would Batman just please kill him? <laughs> and, Robin laid a, and Robin laid an egg again. How does that even work? I mean, what? Or, well, let's get into a different time. But, you know, since we don't have much to talk about, I want to fill it up with, uh, first off, controls. If you're using a controller, inverted or non-inverted? Non-inverted. Oh, you uh, Inverted. Right, casual? Depen- depends on what you're asking. Are you asking for camera look or for flight controls? Uh, both. Flight inverted, camera not. Really? Wow. See, it's inverted either way for me. Oh. It's like, go ahead. Well, let's see. Camera controls, you want X-axis inverted. And Y-axis is fine. Mm-hmm. I, okay. Flight, con- flight I controls, actually, invert Y, keep X normal. I actually really hate the whole X-Y-axis thing. I don't know when that became popular. Uh, I wish they would go back to saying, like, vertical and horizontal. Right. Or, or even up and down and left <laughs> and right. Right. You dude. know, because I'm used to what has become the standard that Y axis is up and down. But mm-hmm. let's stop and think for a moment. Uh, X and Y are just letters in the alphabet. You could say Q and P. I mean, eh, but inverted. <laughs> Totally. See, yeah, I'm fully inverted. Ryan came over here, was trying to play uh, one of my games. And he's just like, what is wrong with this? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I look pushed down to look down. And it looks up. What the hell's going on? I went, oh, it's it's inverted. What the hell's wrong with you? What sort of barbarism now, is this? <laughs> now, if it's a mouse and keyboard, then it's not inverted. Absolutely. Exactly. Because it confuses me. But yeah, basically, it's flight stick controls. Like, if I'm pulling... When you pull back on a flight stick, the plane goes up. When you pull back on the stick, Mm. you look up. It's that simple. Oh, man, then that must mean I'm a freak for flying, because I don't like that inverted flying (laughs) either. (laughs) He's going to get into the cockpit like, excuse me! (laughs) I I think we know that we're not going to fly on Ryan Airlines. (laughs) <laughs> why the, Why did you end up nose in the ground on the runway? I pushed up and it wouldn't go up. I don't know did, what the hell did happened. Did the last pilot not uninvert this flight? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Well, um, guys, I really don't know what else we're going to talk about this podcast. Nothing really. Oh, there was something that did happen. Apparently a fucking movie came out um, that people have been amped for. Super excited. Uh, fucking Infinity Wars! Holy shit! What, 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 what? I thought you were gonna say Rampage. Oh, 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 oh yeah, oh. Rampage came out. Oh, honey, give me my anti-diarrhea medicine. He mentioned Rampage on The Rock. <laughs> Jesus, Rampage. Rampage over that a- Wait, well, Robbie, what are you doing tomorrow? I'll get my Infinity Gauntlet ready. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, in case you didn't already realize this, guys, uh, fucking spoilers are incoming. So if you don't want to hear it, 
either skip this whole podcast. None of us will be brokenhearted. We understand completely. We all understand. Uh, but yet either yes. skip it or just fast forward a lot and hope we're not talking about it at that point in time. Maybe I'll be nice and put a time marker when we're done talking. Every 10 minute interval, it. there's going to be a spoiler. I guarantee you it. it something <laughs> happened. 10 minutes. Something Massive, happened. girthy, okay. veiny spoiler. Ugh. All right. Is this I the can... first time we've um, all seen a movie, like, right as it's come I out? So. Yes. Yes, actually, yes. It's... Yeah. I, I think it is the first time all of us have seen the movie the weekend it uh, came out, and we're, we're all hyped to talk about it. Uh, uh, guys, I... I'm really scared <laughs> you were actually somewhat professional right. and I'm not ready for that kind of commitment oh if we're going professional I'm out of here <laughs> but so right. let, let me start because I can do a simple review of the movie without any spoilers I don't know about anybody else but first of all it's good just like pretty much all of the MCU movies, there are varying levels of good. I'm not sure I'd put this at great, but it is really good. Now, the reason I wouldn't put it as great is because if you have not seen any of the other MCU movies, there are parts you're probably not going to get as much out of it. Well, technically, because you have just seen it Civil War and you pretty much have a good understanding of some of it? No, I was thinking about many of the things that occurred, and I only saw it once so far. I'm probably going to see it again. Uh, I think you kind of have to have seen both of the previous Avengers movies. Yeah. Um, well, look at me did. with uh, the redhead chick me asking you who the fuck she was because I didn't watch Age of Ultron <laughs> yet. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. I mean, a uh, movie you... that's supposed to be the culmination of, like, ten years' worth of yeah. storytelling. Yeah. Probably going to have to watch yeah. a few movies beforehand. And, and and that's fine. You know, I, I think that they have earned the right to do a movie where they do their best to explain a bunch of stuff. But if you haven't seen the rest of the movies, well, you, the loss of info on your part is kind of your own fault at this point. I mean, this is the... 19th or 20th movie I think no so, denying that at all I don't I don't argue that one bit it's just you know me and movies don't really get yeah. along too well normally so that's why I was like I'll just go see a Infinity War it'll be fine <laughs> apparently it <laughs> but, wasn't <laughs> but I, I will say that while the movie was very good uh, if you haven't seen the M3 MCU movies you might be a little bit lost at points it, it my mom went to see it. She liked it for the most part. Um, what I will say, though, is... And I think I think I have to give the spoiler warning at this point now. It is the Empire Strikes Back of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. How so? And, and I mean that in almost every way. So, if you've seen a little movie called Star Wars at some point in your life... Uh, the original trilogy, which is uh, New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. Uh, when Empire came out, it is generally considered the best of the franchise. I'm not quite certain that that's what this movie is for the MCU, but it does do a lot of great things, and the tone is very... loss. Like, like the tone of the movie is is very much. This is not a win for the good guys. We'll see you back next year for the win. Makes sense. Now, since we're into spoiler territory, allow me to give you my a couple of quick thoughts, and then I'll let everybody else talk. Let quote-unquote um one is i was wrong and what i was wrong about is that i did not think they were going to literally kill as many people as they did i thought we were going to get like two maybe three deaths and only one of them was going to be tangentially important i i knew vision was going to die 
I well, mean, it was in the fucking was trailer, for Christ's sake. They destroyed yeah, that. Which, which was kind of annoying that they did that, but I mean, you kind of had to expect it. He's got an Infinity Stone in his head. Thanos is collecting the Infinity Stones. But even the, the trailer scene was kind of a mislead, because that wasn't the scene where he died. That is true. Uh, but either way, uh, we knew in that he was going to die. I was pretty certain that Loki was going to die, so on that end, I was right. But I honestly did not expect them to kill half the frickin' universe in one shot. <clears throat> I didn't expect them to, but I fully hope they did. See, that was the biggest thing that was for me. First off, when it came to Loki, it was, I, I guess, realistically poetic justice. How many times that motherfucker died and all of a sudden, by the way, I'm back, gotcha, bitches, to die as pathetically and just... just the shittiest death in the entire movie was Loki. I mean, I think there was passerbyers, just extras in the movie that got a more glamorous death than Loki did. But in a way, isn't that kind of you know, poetic justice of you've died and come back this many times, you resurrected, as they point out in the movie. They really nailed it in going, no resurrections this time. You know, uh, I will th- point out something that bothered me about Loki's death and that his last words were, um, you will never be a god. But to me, like that's not really Thanos' goal here. So well, could you say he's technically playing God? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. his goal is that. Okay, so having read the comic, they did some things that were similar to the comic, and some things that weren't. Um, and who knows what they're going to do in the next part? Um, I, I would, I would agree that. So technically, I was. Also right, because I said that Loki was going to sacrifice himself for his brother. Now, I was expecting a little bit more literal throwing himself in front of a blast or something. Not, okay, I'll give you the information if you don't kill my brother, and then he got killed for it. Uh, But either way, um, I didn't... uh, I'll tell you the, the death that honestly surprised me the most was Heimdall. Really? That one surprised you? Well, actually, let me rephrase. The entire Asgardian ship being being destroyed surprised yeah. me. Like, at the end of Thor Ragnarok, they had that ship appear in the post credit scene. And I was like, uh-oh, what's this ship? And a part of me thought, oh, I, I wonder if it's Thanos' ship. But I didn't expect the very first scene of the of Infinity War to be well off screen. Thanos wrecked all of their stuff and killed most of them. I will ask, uh, at the end of Thor Ragnarok, was Valkyrie on that ship as well? Yeah, all of where them were. She? What was she, where was she in Infin- Infinity War? I wonder. Well, there's like a, a hundred characters i think they just didn't have enough money to pay all of them which no, i would i would like to go on record and say that the russo brothers did a great job of giving screen time to a hundred different superheroes oh yeah definitely but i was kind of wondering uh, is she uh, maybe like been put aside to come back later like in in the next one I, I hope so, but I don't... I mean, everybody was on that ship at the end of Thor Ragnarok, and from what we saw, they were all... At, with the exception of Thor, they were all killed. Well, no, Thor did say later in the movie that he killed half of his people. So didn't that mean, like, half the people on those ships were still alive? Or on the mm-hmm. pieces of the ship or something? Okay. Uh, up until okay. it blew up, yeah. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe he, some of them got away in uh, escape pods or something. I don't maybe, know. Yeah. Or that, or he meant Thanos physically killed half of them, but the other half just died when the ship blew up. For, but that'd be really dumb fucking uh, phrasing. Okay, yeah. uh, my next bit did th- was because I didn't see Ragnarok, but I kind of gathered what happened. Um, was the ship broken in two pieces? Uh, uh, at the, at the, uh, after it was broken, the part that blew up the whole ship. Light. Yeah. The ship was broken into like a hundred pieces the shrapnel, when dude. the Guardians got there. Yeah. Fucking shrapnel. Bodies everywhere. I will, I will say this. Um, 
I, I think like the whether or not Thanos is going to kill off half a race is predicated on the the race's tenacity because during the fight with Iron Man, he says to Iron Man, "I think did he say I like you? I, I'll, I'll, half of humanity will still exist." So I don't know. if... Well, I see. That's the that's the other thing. So in the comic, it's he's killing off half of uh, the universe because yeah. Death wants him to kill. Well, he off wants to impress universe. Death. Yeah. Well, she literally gives him a mission to kill off half the universe, and in order to do it, she gives him the Infinity Gauntlet with all the stones. Because yeah. he says, I can do this, but it'll take forever unless I have the Infinity Gauntlet. I, I got to admit, now, the comic is not the greatest, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, And any comic, when you look back at it, it's not going to be the greatest after 10 years because many comics are of the moment. I think this version of Thanos and his goals in this Marvel Cinematic Universe made him one of the first villains who is given screen time essentially for the first time. I I don't count his end credits smile and his uh, marginal appearance in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy as a first appearance because he literally did nothing in those appearances. In one of them, he smiled, and in the other, he was sitting on a throne in a holographic image. Meh. As a first appearance villain, his reasonings for what he was doing, his pathos and all that other stuff that goes into designing a character, made me... I don't like him, but I understood him. And it made me want to see more of him. Yeah. I, I will say another thing that I found a little bit confusing, and that this is probably chalked up to um, changes in the story as the years go by, is, uh, but if Thanos' entire goal was to collect the Infinity Stones and then kill off half the universe, what was the entire point for the, the, the attack on New York, other than creating the Avengers? Uh, I think the point of the attack on New York is that once Loki had defeated everyone, he was going to give Thanos the Tesseract, and Thanos was probably going to take back the Scepter, which had the Mind Stone in it. Okay, yeah, that makes a bit more sense, because I, I was like, why would he give him a stone if, if he, he wants them? It's like, yeah, his his goal was basically let me use this mind stone to get the tesseract. I'll take over the world, then I'll give you the tesseract. Now, is it the most uh is it a plan that makes a whole lot of sense? No, but I mean if you overanalyze any I I'm kind of justifying a little <laughs> bit with my own, you know, thoughts on it because you kind of have to do that when the plot yeah don't make that much sense but i mean he didn't uh, to be fair he didn't tell loki that he had a mind stone in that scepter he just gave him the scepter true yeah so my thought is that once loki did what he did he was just going to kill loki anyway and take his take his stuff you know most likely yeah (laughs) I, I, oh, oh. So there have been moments in the last few Marvel movies that have given me a nerdgasm. Uh, the moment at the end of uh, Spider Man Homecoming where uh, Tony got engaged to Pepper. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, that shocked me because I was like, I can't believe they actually did it. It, it was one of those things where I was like, you know what would be cool? If they did that in kind of an off-screen way, and then they did it in an on-screen way, in a movie that wasn't even an Iron Man or Avengers movie. And I was like, holy, holy crap. The one that did that for me in this movie, the appearance of the red frickin' skull. Fuck yes. I was was absolutely hoping they'd explain that at some point, and I'm really happy with what they did with it. 
You could oh, so you cool. could ask uh, me when I, I ask me ask Ryan when I was sitting next to him. I was like, "What the fuck, Red Skull? The fuck?" And he uh, starts laughing was, at me. Laughing. I yeah. was like, I thought the I I legitimately thought that they had written the Red Skull off. That they were never going to use him again because uh, what's his face is never going to play him again. Uh, the guy that did it in the Hugo uh, Weaving. Hugo Weaving. He's he basically said he he's not going to do it again. He he's done. He's he's being typecast in all of these comic book and science fiction and fantasy movies, and he wants to do more like dramatic normal stuff. So he's trying to like change his career. And the Red Skull was supposedly the last time he's ever going to do that kind of role. So bringing him back, a was basically saying, yeah, we can recast this guy just like we've recast a bunch of people in this universe already. And B, he's back. Holy crap. Like I'm they're, wondering if that... they're going to if they're going to use him elsewhere now or if he's just like trapped there forever. Well, like, that's like, the... like like did they use it as like um so this is where the Red Skull's been uh that for, that plot thread's ended now. I, see, I don't think that's what it is. I think this is the first serious indication that we know we have, like from a from an MCU perspective, this is this is the MCU background saying we know we have a bunch of villains that we haven't used yet, or yeah. or that we've used once. They're not dead. We can bring them back. This is the first real indication that, yeah. We're gonna start bringing some villains back, which well, gives me so hope cool. that the Mandarin will make a resurgence. Oh at yes, some point. I'm hoping if the Mandarin does make a resurgence, they go, eventually get to Fing Fang Foom. I really hope so. And uh, uh, if you think about it, they can technically still do the Mandarin from the comics. Yes, you have the Iron Man three Mandarin. Oh, he's just another body double. They the real ex- Mandarin exactly. The real Mandarin is a string puller, and the, the whole plot of Iron Man 3 does not counter... Uh, li- like, they can still do the entire... Uh, you can have Iron Man 3, and that guy can say he was the Mandarin, but he could have been having his strings pulled by the real Mandarin without even knowing it. Uh, speaking of uh, very cool nerdy moments... What about Iron Spider? Oh, I, I, that was I, cool. Yeah, I, I like I, like when, when we first like saw some of the trailers, we were like, "Oh, he's on that big flying donut without the suit." And then in the next one, he's like, "Oh, he's got the suit now." How's what? What is going on here? But I, I really like like that transition between the old and new suit. I will ask one thing though: when Spider Man like leaves leaves the bus and swings into action towards the big donut, um. Later on, he like Iron Man gets thrown into like a small park in uh, uh, New York. Uh, and then Spider Man fly like I think does Spider Man save him or something. I'm remembering this terribly now. I uh, I honestly can't remember. I think I I think Spider Man just kind of went towards the danger, and I know that Spider Man came like when Iron Man was smacked into that little park area. Spider Man came past and. Iron Man was like, yeah, those those guys are the wizards. Go go save them. Um, yeah. But one of the things I'm wondering is like, when he says, "Hey kid, where did you come from?" What did Spider Man say? Because I'm like eighty five to ninety percent sure Spider Man said, "I'm from the future," but I'm I feel like I'm going crazy because I can't find any reference to that anywhere. Mm-hmm. I may need to see I, this movie again. I don't I don't think he said I'm I'm from the future. Uh, darn, Robbie, you'll just have to watch it again. Uh, I will say that Doctor Strange said something about time quite a few times, so you might be misremembering it. I don't know. Maybe there's, uh, there's a like, lot to unpack in this movie. In there is, scene. yeah. I'm like the, the, the another nerdgasm moment when Thor shows up at the fucking Wakanda battle. Oh yeah. That is so fucking cool with his new uh, Stormbreaker hammer. Uh, okay, that was. I have I have two minor problems with this movie. 
I, I can I can go back and forth, but um, one minor problem I have is a overall plot problem, and it's related to what happens at the end. This movie is the dream sequence movie. Yeah. Because we know they're going to save the universe in the next movie. So everything that happened in this movie, for the most part, however they save it, they're not going to leave. Like, like, okay, huge spoilers, which we've already got been going into. Uh, yeah. Black Panther dies or gets yeah. turned into Ash. Um, Bucky dies. Uh, Doctor Strange goes away. Bucky uh, goes away. These are okay. characters, especially Black Panther, that are definitely going to have their own second solo movies. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because Black Panther made over a billion dollars. I like how they pretty much <laughs> left, like, all the ones that were left, like, apart from a couple of others, were the original Avengers. Ah, good catch. I didn't even think about that. You're yeah, right. Think, apart, apart from, like, Nebula, Nebula and Rocket, it was all the original Avengers left. It was it was Cap Thor. It was the holy trinity of the Avengers. It was Cap Thor and and Tony were left. Holy cow! I did not even think about that. You hear that sound, everyone? That's the sound of minds being blown. No, it's actually a train horn out back of my house. But oh, oh, oh you mean the what casual said? I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on, let me close my window here. Um, <laughs> I didn't notice now, that actually at all either. Shit. Now, the other problem I had was really just a tactical issue. So when they were having the fight with Thanos uh, on the on the planet, wherever they were, uh, Doctor Strange uh, and yeah, the, the rest of them, their goal was to get the glove off of him, right? Yeah. And that went to went to crap because uh, of... God damn it, Star-Lord. Star-Lord. <laughs> Again, if you think about it, because he did the same thing in... Uh, in uh, Guardians 2, when yeah. his dad said, you killed my mom. I will or, say this, I, and I think I think this is where you're going, casual. Uh, Stephen Strange is playing the long game. I, I will agree with that, because he saw the one future. Yeah. Uh, which, honestly, I didn't expect him to say one. I thought he would say zero, mm-hmm. which was kind of interesting. That's yeah. what I was expecting, too. <laughs> But but that means, yes, I agree with you that he is definitely playing whatever long game it has to happen. But here's here's what I thought in that moment as they were trying to get his glove off. Now, having seen a few Star Wars movies, the most common tactic that they use in Star Wars when they're having their lightsaber battles is they chop limbs off. And Spider-Man, Peter Parker kept referencing these, quote, old movies. Ha ha, isn't it funny how young he is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has seen Star Wars. Why didn't one of them chop off his arm when they were all stretched out? I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, an arm gets chopped off previously, so it wouldn't be I, I, weird. I'm just saying. And, and at the end, when uh, Thana, when Thor put the axe through his chest and he said, you should have gone for the head, I was, yeah. I, all I could think was, yeah, he, he really should have. What or gone idiot. for the fucking arm just to chop off or, the goddamn gauntlet. That's the first yes. thing I thought of when I saw that scene. <laughs> you notice how yes. after, after he uses the gauntlet, it's basically trashed apart from the stones? That, okay... That was the most interesting part to me because he still seems to have the power, but that gauntlet is cracked now. Yeah, I guarantee that comes into play somehow in the next. I'm one. wondering if that means the the second gauntlet will come into play, or oh, the one that was at the blacksmith. Uh, no way, that was um... the one at the blacksmith was just a mold. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was thinking the there's that... actually a uh, there's actually a uh, a right handed gauntlet as well. Yeah, I was thinking, oh. Uh, the... In uh, Thor Ragnarok, I think Hela says that one's fake, mm-hmm. and also th- that was on As- Asgard, and Asgard's kind of gone now. So my point is moved. Yeah, I- I'm yeah. trying to find a picture of it, but I could have. Uh, it looked like the stones were fucking damaged too, but that was maybe just well, me because it was a. You yeah, know, I, look I think it's just. Gone. Yeah, yeah I-, I think it's just the gauntlet. Basically, like the stones are so powerful that the gauntlet is like a one-use thing, maybe. Mm, not well. I mean, using. 
all of the power of yeah, the stones all I mean. at once when he snapped his fingers, maybe. But, okay, so I have to say my favorite fight in that whole movie was the Titan fight because of that whole thing with Doctor Strange versus Thanos. Oh, yeah, that like, was so cool. That was spectacular. Like, I didn't know how they were going to do magic versus magic essentially and they did such a great job like all the things that were going on in that fight i have to see it again just to like see what each person was throwing at the that was the classic epic wizard battle you know that was just like holy crap yeah yeah i like the couple of um moments which i thought were emotional in at least for me was one of course like Spider-Man's death. It was the one that was played out the longest, and yeah. I'm actually... Okay. I know why they did it from a logistic standpoint, yeah. so that he could have his little last moment with Tony Stark, but I'm honestly wondering from an in-universe perspective, how did Peter last so long? Wow. Well... It's a vulnerability of a spider. I know it's drama, but the kid's even, badass. And plus, even with the suit. other, I I agree, he is badass, and and, and it makes me wonder if he's because they tend to not play up how strong and durable Peter Parker is in most comics, and yeah. they have played up how strong he truly is in this universe so far. Like, when he, when that one guy was, like, beating everyone down super easily, and Peter just grabs that hammer or whatever he was throwing, and is like, hey guys, what's up? Like it was nothing. I'm wondering if this is another moment of them, like, trying to show that Peter is stronger than you think. I was about to say, actually, I, uh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, dude. My, my uh, response to that casual is... How come Tony Stark is not a pancake at, the, at this time? <laughs> <laughs> Those the nanobots are for, really, for ten years. Really strong. Yeah, he would have been. He'd have been a vegetable after year three. I'm gonna say this though. <laughs> I was giggling my ass off at the theater because remember how we got discussion of Spider-Man's powers, where if he wants to stay clinged on to something, he just it's impossible to remove him. It Unless showed- he's unconscious. Yes. Perfectly conscious, getting drug around while he's trying to plant his feet to stop something from bowling. I'm like, but, but, your spider powers, you can't move, Spidey. Well, what if he has be to fair, like made Marvel. Oh, okay, I, I will, I will give you, I will give this much to that, though. Uh, when he was getting dragged across things, he was in the new suit. Oh, true. And, and also, to be fair, uh, a lot of the time when he, when he gets... When he sticks to things, uh, he, he, he'll he stay stuck to them, but those things will no longer stay stuck to whatever the rest of them are made of. True. Yeah, he has been pulled off a wall in one of the movies uh, when the wall came with him. So That's always know. fun to watch. It's like, Jesus Christ. But, but there, there's two things that I'm still willing to give some amount of like leeway on his power set. One is that he's still extremely new to his own powers. Yeah. Uh, like, I think by the time Infinity War starts, only a year has gone by since he's really started using them, give or take. And two, he's in the new suit. Maybe his He's not used to getting his powers to work through the new suit. I don't know. Yeah. No, it was just one of those things that kind of help it laugh, you know? Yeah. I was so happy they added the um, the, the the little legs to the Iron Spider suit. That did make me smile a bit. I was giggling my ass off when I saw that. I I like that Peter Parker is still that kid that is having a fangasm moment of being involved in all of this. <laughs> yep, yep, like, yep. Like he's he's not just oh now I'm now I'm gonna do some real stuff At, even after all that happened in uh, Homecoming he's still like oh oh I can't believe oh hi Tony Stark again hi Captain America well I he didn't actually meet Captain America but you know yeah. like like he's still like fanboying the whole time 
And even though I saw it in the most recent trailer before the movie, I it still made me laugh when uh, when he introduced himself to Doctor Strange and he said, "I'm Doctor Strange," and he was like, "Oh, um, we're using code uh, okay, words." Okay, fake names. Uh, I'm Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, I think that's why he's... I'm sorry, Rad. I keep on talking over you, buddy. Go ahead. Oh, I... Well, the other part of that is... Great. There's there's an Ant-Man 2. <laughs> that one. And an Ant-Man. Yeah, I giggled my ass off at that one. I, I think there... the reason why Spider-Man's so likable is because he is so humble as a kid. He's not that yeah. fucking cocky little prick that we've gotten in the other two. He's actually just a humble, like, oh my god, really? I can do this? Thank you. He's just so. I, I will. I will say there was possibly a missed opportunity in a line of dialogue, but also uh, there was a lot of laughing through moments in the movie, and so I might have just missed it. But at one point, Thanos calls them all insects, and then he smashes Spy- Peter Parker yeah. like away. The missed opportunity right there is Peter Parker, after being smashed, could have said with a kind of woozy voice, I'm an arachnid. Right? Yeah. <sighs> that would have been good. But yeah. if if you do something like that, I think you get pretty close to Guardians of the Galaxy 2 territory where it's like, you know, yeah. everything undercut with a joke. But but it would have been so in keeping with Peter Parker's yes, like exactly style but that being said what a great job they did with the snark offs between the snarky characters Mm -hmm. like i i I was was, one thing i was shocked i I was i will say one thing i was disappointed with is i didn't get the um iron man dr strange awesome beard bros moment (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was thinking about that when they were having their big drama moment. Like yeah. one of them just just mentioned that your beards are basically the same. Come on, technically they, they did have the beard off though. Um, Thor and Captain America. Oh, that yeah. is true. That is true. They had they had the haircut and the beard bro moment. I forgot about that. I remember seeing that kind of giggling. Ha ha, punny, cute. Mm. Well, while we're on the topic yeah. of uh, facial hair, did uh, Star Lord always have that mustache? Because I couldn't remember if he had it in his previous um, movies. Uh, That's I a great question. I think he did. I, I think he always had kind of like a scruff face. Yeah, and, I feel and... like more in the second one than the first one, though. Right. Yeah, I, I think it was just more noticeable in this one. Maybe I, I would... did really like the moment where. Uh, they were talking about uh, how Star Lord put on some weight because obviously, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's his face? Like, the actor did put on a little bit of weight between movies, and I oh, like yeah. that they made a point of actually like, oh yeah, you totally have you, <laughs> you, you're not felt at all anymore. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved um, Star Lord and Thor's interactions. It's like, are you, you making your voice lower? Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. I started giggling my ass off. <clears throat> no, no, this is how I always talk. <laughs> no, you're not. You're totally alone. It shut up. <laughs> Did you just say as hitherto unknown? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is something that's very common in uh, comic books and TV series and lots of things. Um, it's called power creep. If if you don't know what power creep is, it's basically a character is X powerful. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, let's say they're an 8. But in order to present a threat to them, the threat has to be at a 9. So the only way they defeat that threat is they also somehow just become a 9. So that they can defeat the threat that is a 9. Go Super Saiyan. I feel like Thor is starting to suffer from power creep in the MCU. I mean, like... Well, I, I can see where you're coming from. He survived a star in this movie. True, but he is a I'd god. I'd say that's okay. Exactly. I'd also say uh, Thor isn't really going to be around after this, so possible. it's fine. Yeah, it is possible. Now, it, okay... 
in in theorizing on what they do with the next one, this is the first time that I honestly have no idea. Like because of the, I thought what they were gonna do was, oh, we're gonna get him real close to getting the last stone. The Avengers are gonna like beat him almost down and then he's gonna say well i got the final stone from vision now i'm off to go uh, go get the sixth stone see you guys see you chumps later and then they'd have to follow him into space and it would be a whole thing that most of the next movie would be about them trying to stop him from getting the final stone blah 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 yeah the fact that he got all six in this movie snapped his fingers and got rid of half the universe and his job is done like I don't know what they're going to do in the next movie. I mean, yeah, obviously I like, I like, somehow it's going to be righted, but I, I, like I, how, I have like, no theories. At the end of the movie, he basically just retires. He's like, job done. Yeah. Go, go relax on a planet somewhere. All right. Yeah. So, Which is what he said he was going to do, which <laughs> made me like him even more. Like, he didn't go off and, and start, like, using the gauntlet to do all... He just... Literally yeah. sat down on some planet at a at a cabin in the woods watching the sunset. Like I will well, say, I'm done. The the other moment that made me emotional, and it is that I I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to make Thanos into like a. Um, I don't know, I'm, not, I'm not like, I'm not sure what the term is, but it's like they're the trying to make the audience. Is. Yeah, I mean, like they're trying to make the audience see his point of view. So, so like, yeah, he he's kind of right. Overpopulation is a real problem, but the, his methods are just the worst way to go about it. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, and the the bit that made me um almost not tear up, but like emotional was uh, after he snaps his fingers, he sees young Gamora inside the Soul Stone, and he's like, "Did he do it?" Which, like, "Yeah, I did it." It's like that is it definitely going to come back to like, haunt him. Yeah, it's like, movie. "What did it cost?" He says, "Everything." I just really I, love that scene. I was shocked how much time they gave to Thanos' drama. Yeah. Like, in a good way. Like, I was like, oh, Thanos... When I went in, I was expecting just a lot of punching, a lot of, you know, we have to figure out what to do about this super powerful guy. But instead, we got to see a lot of Thanos. All right. Are we ready for the Stacy point of view? Because it's the part yeah, in the podcast where everybody calls Stacy a dumb cunt. I think you should just leave. <laughs> oh, that, that, just out! <laughs> yeah, that always happens. Right? I have to say they did a very good job. I enjoyed it a lot. But it felt so cramped and rushed. You didn't get a chance to breathe the entire movie. And that was a problem. I, I... I can actually see that point of view. It, it, there, there was a similar feeling uh, in Age of Ultron. <laughs> Hold the press, casual, Stacy and Creed on something, sort of. <laughs> I get where uh, you're coming from, but I, I was going into the movie with the, the whole, I guess, expectation is I want them to start fight, to start fighting and never stop. That was just me, yeah. though. Well, I mean, that's uh, kind of what I wanted from, uh, you know, a DC movie, and when I got it, people said it was bad, you know, because I enjoyed the fight non-stop fights when they opened up with it you know it's just i i i I think go ahead buddy i'm sorry i think the difference here between justice league and this movie in terms of the pacing is that in justice league there was so little plot to the villain he literally just came in and was just like i'm gonna wreck you all your stuff and that's it whereas The reason that I can agree that there was a little bit of of fast pacing in this one is that Thanos was coming in to wreck all their stuff, but they also gave him some dramatic moments. So when it was slower, there was... It was like... Okay, you said there was very little breathing room. It's like being in the water during a giant waves are crashing over you and you get just enough time to breathe before the next wave crashes. And that was the Thanos moments was that small amount of time to breathe, but it was so small between all the big, big fight sequences and whatever else is going on 
that I agree that maybe it would have been better if they had split it into two parts and done like two hours each part, but then you would have probably run into the other problem that people would have been like, oh, why'd they split this into two parts? They could have made one movie. I suppose, but it's just the problem is with this is that there was so much crammed into one movie and there was just so fast paced and so little breathing room. I forgot half the movie. And if I want to oh, remember so all of it, I, ha- I, I have to go see it again. To me, that's a problem. I, see, I don't uh, like it because yeah. of that, you know? Well, okay, let me rephrase that. It's not that I didn't like the movie. I did enjoy it. It's um, just you kind of wish you could remember more of it. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. And it was just it was it was disappointing because I couldn't remember the whole damn thing. Like, uh, there were so many moments in that movie. Like I pointed out the the Loki death, which I liked but I hated. You know, um, Thor just living through everything that they threw at him that he should have died. But once again, he's a <laughs> power god. creep. <laughs> well, he's a god. I mean, it, now okay. I will say one thing for that power creep though. In Thor Ragnarok, uh, one of the one of the characters that was voiced by the director, the the rock guy, Korg, he he said of Valkyrie, "Be careful; those Asgardians are hard to perish." True, very true. So it does. I mean that that kind of every time he was surviving the next big giant thing, I was like. Yeah, they really are hard to perish. <laughs> the hard uh, to perish wants to go into war with other people and get stabbed by a staff. Anyone else kind of disappointed at the um, lack of Hulk in this movie? Uh, well, actually, that's something else I wanted to get to and I wanted to discuss a little bit later, but, uh, to tell you the truth. Um, I... I, I what the fuck was the internal battle with Hulk going on? What was that? What was that okay. all about? I couldn't figure it out. I don't that that part. I don't know. Like I I've gotten theory. used. I've gotten used to the various things that they've done with the Hulk in all media, in TV shows, in the comics, in in lots of things. You know, and a lot of people were saying, "Oh, Planet Hulk is next." After they saw the Gladiator stuff in Thor Ragnarok. I think they're going to do another solo Hulk movie. I yeah. I was talking and to Ryan about that too. Kind yeah. of lead into that, but the thing is, I don't know what that was because I can't think of a Hulk story where Bruce is trying to get the Hulk out and the Hulk is saying no. I might like I I was fully expecting them to do like a whole like. Thanos is here. Like, uh, do you think Thanos is stronger than you? And he uh, to, to rile the Hulk up, and then I expected, I fully expected him to like to burst out of the armor, like screaming like Hulk is strong as there is one mm-hmm. there is or something like that. Yeah, but it, it just that, never happened. That, I was like, what? yeah, I I think yeah. that I thought that too at the time, but then it just never happened. Hulk just kept saying no. Like, so uh, here's what happened: um, Hulk got his ass kicked. Like he's never had it before. Yes, and Hulk is afraid. defeated him. Yes, and Hulk is afraid. You know that's why he doesn't want to come out. Yeah, that's scary. Because he's, Hulk, he's so he's so afraid of that. Like, yeah, but well, that's what I yes. feel like. Banner was going to rile him up to get him angry enough to fight. And, and, and maybe I, I that would add on. Go no, ahead, casual. Well, I, I was going to 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 add on to that theory. Um, I, I like that idea for why he doesn't want to come out because it's the first time Hulk has ever been defeated. But there was that line where uh, after he didn't come out for the second or third time, uh, Bruce said, you and I are going to have to have a serious conversation later. And that that kind of, to me, that said, are we going to get another Hulk, Hulk solo movie? Like, I, I remember looking at Ryan and going, how many times they've done two different Hulk movies and not a single one of them ever done him justice. Can we finally get a proper Hulk movie that gives one that actually has a proper man playing Bruce Banner who does the role pro- and you just fucking feel him. He does the role correctly. And then also just how well they did Hulk himself, his body mass, his personality, all of that. 
you know, are they ever going to give him a good one? And could this be the Hulk, you know, internal conflict that brings it about finally? Who as knows? A, <laughs> yeah, who knows? As as an add-on to this, remember in the comics, as Hulk gets smarter, his power level goes down. Mm, so, that you know, he, I don't remember that. Because he's not, he's not full-on savage anymore. Yeah, because like, the gray joke could, is that Hulk is pretty smart, and he's not as strong as the green savage Hulk. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, could we be leading to gray Hulk? That'd be interesting. Now, yeah, or, as, or as people call it, Professor Hulk in the comics. I have the greatest question for you guys about the end. Not the post-credit, because why would they wait that long for Captain Marvel? Just asking. Jesus fucking Christ. Wow, that took uh, a long time. Be- because uh, that from the perspective of those that were on Earth, this was just another thing that came and went. Ah, good point. And and Nick Fury basic. I mean, if you think about from a timeline perspective, this all happens in less than a day. Very true. Yeah, very true. And so, from Nick Fury's perspective, he's just get, he's just arriving in New York. He's just getting the information that the big alien thing came and the Avengers defeated it and it went away. Oh, and over in Wakanda, they don't know what's going on. Then. He sees half the population of the planet disappearing, literally in front of his eyes. In terms of uh, what's her face, so he's like, "Oh shit, this is something way beyond what I can handle." Now, yeah, it's like all the people are dying. I can't get in touch with Stark. Call the last resort in. So, here comes the fan theory, and here's the question I have for everyone. Me and Ryan argued this for probably close to forty-five minutes straight about the end of the movie. Snaps fingers, gauntlet is destroyed, correct? Goes into the soul gauntlet stone. Gauntlet is... Gauntlet is not destroyed. It's, gauntlet it's is fucked. Damaged. damaged. It's yeah. fucked. Um, goes into the soul stone. Well, no, no, it's not... It's not fucked, because he uses it after he snaps his fingers to teleport away to whatever planet he decided to. Now, this is but where the question comes in. He goes into the Soul Stone, asks him, you know, uh, uh, she asks him, what did it cost? Everything. One, inside the Soul Stone, he's not wearing the gauntlet, but at the same time, when he comes back out of the Soul Stone, after talking to her, he teleports away. Goes to the next scene. Did you see a gauntlet? When he's no, sitting he on took the it pilot. off. He yeah. literally walked out of the portal, sat down. No, 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 no. You, you're misremembering. So, yeah. he, he once again, overload. A... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, after he snaps his fingers, he goes into whatever that was with little Gamora. Mm-hmm. We don't even know what that was. Maybe he's literally in the Soul Stone. Maybe he's having a dream. We don't know. It was the Soul Stone. Like, in the comics, the Soul Stone has had like its own like pocket dimension kind of thing going on. Then he comes back to reality. Mm-hmm. He's still got the axe in his chest. Yep. He's still got Thor st- sitting there right in front of him. And... And Thor's asking him, what did you do? The, the, the gauntlet has clearly been damaged. And then he just uses the power of the gauntlet and whisks himself away. Then we get all the aftermath of everybody vanishing into ash. But no, he sits down. There's no, when he goes to sit down at the planet. One, he sits down with no gauntlet. Two, no I, chest wound. Okay, I don't know if he had no gauntlet on in that in that you know cabin in the woods scene. Yeah. But I will say that that scene, even if, if he did have no gauntlet on, which I think you're right. I think he did have no gauntlet on. First of all, the power of the gauntlet is still there. Like, whatever damage it did to the gauntlet and whatever that means for the future of the next movie, uh, I don't know. But it's still there, which yeah, like explains he, why he, he could repair himself, why he, you know, is on whatever planet. Yeah, but I think, like, that, he, could, he could still, like, use the stones individually, but if he used them all at once again, it would damage the gauntlet even more. Possibly, we don't know. But the point, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that that scene of him, 
is his literal like like he said earlier in the movie. Once I do this, I'm done. I, yeah. I once I do this, I you know uh, I can't remember who said something that, like somebody asked him, "What do you do after you do this?" And he said, "Then I rest." And he did. Like that's what intrigues me the most is yeah. he didn't go on to be a big villain guy. He just found a planet somewhere. He did what he wanted to do. Now he's going to rest. And that is really like super interesting to me. Like I am so much more interested to see how this whole thing comes about in the next movie now because of how they played Thanos out. Yeah, he's he's not like one of those typical villains that has like grandiose I'm going to rule the universe type thing. He's like I want to do this one thing then I'm I'm done. I well, I will say about the ending scene everybody just saw an X-rated movie and nobody and nobody knew it. Because you just saw the biggest balls in history. <laughs> Marvel actually pushed the doomsday button on the yeah. MCU. I will also say one thing. Gamora technically not dead. Well, okay. So let's, let's use the old, uh, let, let's use the old comic book thing. Um, we did see her body. Like, she didn't yeah. fall off a cliff, and then we don't see it. We saw her broken body at the bottom. Yeah. Well, what I mean is, like, ten- by technically not dead, I mean, like... Right. She's we in know... the Soul Stone now. Yeah, yeah. Like, anyone that's sacrificed to the Soul Stone is most likely in the Soul Stone pocket dimension thing. So I'm guessing so... That, that's how she's going to come back for Guardians 3. And, and that's... Okay. Oh! I have to mention one of the other scenes I loved was after he had acquired the reality gem and he turned Drax into cubes. Oh, yeah, I love that bit. Also, I um, was like, holy crap. Yeah. Also, um, when Thanos died in that scene, I, 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 it legitimately got me for a second. Uh, yeah. I like, mean, I, there I, was a part of me that was like, this has to be some kind of a ruse. Yeah, like, I, maybe I just wasn't thinking, but I was like, really? What? <laughs> and we're done. An hour <laughs> in, well, movie over. Yeah, so, see, there there were two things I thought at that moment. I was like, okay, he, maybe this is how they get the gauntlet away from him, and then he comes back. Because he's still Thanos. Yeah. But what then... He did the whole thing, but then I started to realize, wait, he just got the reality gem. Yeah, I, I felt like, also in that scene that made me laugh was, um, well, one, Star-Lord's orders, which were not in any way followed, and also the, the fact that, like, when Thanos revealed what was really around them, is like, oh, yeah, everyone is kind of fucked up, but in reality, everyone is really fucked up and on fire. <laughs> It just made me laugh. It's like, why did you make everything just look a little less fucked up? Yeah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> like, yeah, everything's kind of messed up in here. Nobody's around. Oh, and by the way, it's even worse than you imagine. Yeah. So uh, my friends and I were, were debating at the end, and I tend to subscribe to it. I believe what can fix it, you know, what can, like, Make it so the Avengers win already exists in the MCU. It's not like someone out. It's something we've already seen. Just nobody's really finding it. So someone's theory was that uh, your ticket is Ant Man. Quite possibly, he can, he can go to the quantum dimension. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of Ant Man, so Ant Man and Hawkeye were mentioned. Mm-hmm. Offhand, and basically, they in the same sentence they basically said that they both disappeared after the events of Civil War. Like Hawkeye, Hawkeye went off the map, and Scott disappeared because of things that happened. Now the next movie is Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah. So. Either they are going to have so 
So if you've seen the trailers for Ant-Man and the Wasp, the tone of those trailers is Marvel fun. The tone after the end of Avengers Infinity War is doom and gloom. Mm. Like half the world's population, half the universe population is gone. Thanos is won. The Avengers are scattered. Does this mean that we have been lied to about the tone of Ant-Man and the Wasp? Or is that going to be happening before? Before Infinity War occurs, I'm thinking Ant-Man that and the Wasp is going to happen before, like absolutely. Well, I'm thinking yes before, but I'm thinking it's going to end with people starting to disappear. Ooh, that's possibility. Okay, okay. Who? Do, which one of them disappears? Is it Ant Man or the Wasp? I'm thinking. Um, I don't know. I, I think Ant Man's going to be instrumental in the next movie, so I'm thinking it's. <gasps> I just had a great theory. Scott Lang and uh, What's Her Face both disappear, and we have to get a return of the original Ant Man to do Ooh, whatever cool. happens next, which is uh, Old Man. Old Man Hank Pym. Yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> Uh, so I noticed a very neat uh, storytelling device that they used. Vision and Scarlet Witch are hilariously overpowered. Yes. <laughs> so I thought it was a genius move on their part. Let's get them both out of the final battle without it being stupid. And and Doctor Strange. They got rid of all the super power players. Yeah, when, when Thanos you know, snapped his fingers and did his old half the universe thing, you know, in my mind, it's like, oh, Scarlet Witch is gone because she can undo it. Which... You know, she, she has that kind of juice. kind of suffering from a little power creep, too. They just kind of, eh, whatever power she needs for the moment. <laughs> well, she's always been like that. Yeah, that, she uh, true. completely rewrote reality in the comics because she could. Yeah. Uh, and, and... So... We don't know much about Captain Marvel, but we do know one thing for certain. Those production stills that people took of her on whatever set where she was wearing the green outfit, that was definitely a green screen outfit. Yeah. Because the the image in the pager was of the red and blue. So we can be fairly certain that they're going to do some green screeny effects with her outfit. And I'm kind of excited to see that because I want to see what they're going to do to like make as her long, be all powerful. As long as, it, as long as it doesn't look green lantern-y. Oh, no, I, I doubt that. A theory I read is that her, the greenish uniform was like her initial uniform. Yeah, because... Um, Before she's, like, possible. fully powered yeah. up or whatever. Her, her powers are, are of Cree origin, so the green outfit makes sense for that. I was super glad that they didn't reveal the... Oh, oh my favorite thing. And this ex- this definitely explains why they didn't say Black Panther will return, even though we know he will. Yeah. Because he's gone. <laughs> 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 like, he'll return, but, you know... <laughs> it's it's in a way that little that little thing where they say somebody will return and they didn't do it for Black Panther was a kind of fun little foreshadowing you know like we know you guys watch all the way to the end credits so here's here's a little easter egg sort of yeah well, I, I liked I, it go ahead well I was going to just gonna say that um, I I fully expected them to drop the the name of the next movie during that little Thanos will return bit. I'm actually yeah. surprised, and I'm, I completely understand why they didn't. I think maybe I've heard a few theories that the next movie may be called something along the lines of Avengers Disassembled or Avengers Forever. Hmm. I think we don't... If they're smart, I think they don't reveal the next... uh, Like, 
the reveal for the next Avengers movie, I think, is just the title. Yeah. Like, literally, that's all they revealed. Because they've been hyping it up for, for like, the last half a year at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we get the first trailer maybe in six months or something. But... I was... Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, like, a lot of people were like, oh, it's going to be a super big spoiler for the next movie. No, I think it really is just going to be a spoiler for this movie. I think yeah, that yeah. whatever the title is, it's a spoiler for the fact that half the universe is gone. I was fully expecting the thing, the stinger after the credits to be, hi, I'm Thanos, and I'm here to talk to you about loss. <laughs> <laughs> I did like... The, the little end cap thing, like we were saying about so-and-so will return, that it said Thanos will yeah. return. That was like so that. ominous. <laughs> so, long story short, Infinity War, yay or nay? Yay. Eh. Uh, yeah, I, I would eh. have to, I would have two thumbs up. I'm, it was I'm, like, okay. It wasn't amazing, but it was good. I'm actually really interested to know, because they said that um, part one and whatever part two is going to be called are very different movies, so I'm interested to see what part four is going to be like in comparison. Infinity War 2 could be an actual heist movie. (laughs) Yeah, you you, you do the the Avengers 11. I, I, I still am of the opinion that if they are smart, they bring in Adam Warlock in the next movie. I can understand. Yeah, I, I really want to see Adam Warlock in in the um, the MCU. I don't know how you write him in without involving the Soul Stone, though. Like, maybe he's the one uh, who takes it. somehow gets it. Like, like I, I feel like... So here's here's a theory I don't think is going to happen, but it would be potentially interesting is after everybody's been defeated and blah, blah, blah. So after the initial Infinity War in the comics, they did this whole thing where Thanos got wrecked and they split the stones out of the gauntlet and they gave them to Adam Warlock and five other people. And they were the Infinity Guardians or something like that. Oh, yeah. The Infinity... Go- the, no, the Infinity Watch, I think. Whatever it was called. Yeah. I think that based on the MCU, the Guardians of the Galaxy become the Infinity Guardians. Yeah. It's like, um... I think one of the main stories it's based off of as well as Thanos Quest... Uh, in that story, Nebula gets the gauntlet from Thanos, and then after that, um, Adam Warlock gets the gauntlet and undoes what Thanos did. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. in in the original Infinity War comic, eventually Nebula gets... And that's a story that could still happen, because Nebula is still there. Yeah, exactly. And she's really angry right now. Oh, yeah. So we could still potentially see that story where she gets the gauntlet and, like, snaps Thanos out of existence or something. I could see that. I was disappointed that the um, children of Thanos died off as easily as they did, though. I was disappointed in the children of Thanos in general. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, they were they were fine, but they were just kind of super generic, equal power to the characters they were going up against. Like, one was the wizardy psychic guy that was going up against Doctor yeah. Strange. I thought he was cool. Yeah, he I like was. Him but again, like, each one was clearly designed to go up against the character they were pitted against in the story. and ever, And they were... Like, like they didn't have enough character for me to even remember who they were. It was just the guy that was Doctor Strange's equal, the guy that was Hulk's equal, the yeah. chick that was the chick's equal. You know, it was like, eh, okay. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the... way for them to go out, though, yeah, that, that was that was great. Oh, sucked into space. 
incinerated in a shield. That was yeah. hilarious when uh, I think it was Black Widow said something like "ew" or "that was gross" yeah, or whatever. She had some yeah. blue blood on her face. Yeah, like that was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, uh, like also with um, Ebony, not Ebony anymore. Um, Corvus Glaive, uh, who got stabbed by Vision in the back and died that way. Um, it was just like, just like a small thing that they didn't mention is that he can only be killed by his own like staff thing, which he, he did ah, in the end. Ah, okay. So that was like a an in universe like kind Not of an Easter that, egg. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know that. What I what I will say is I was marginally disappointed that we didn't get a little bit more between Black Widow and Hulk. Yes. Because they did do like the clear like we have to talk about something later look. Yeah. But and, and I mean in universe I guess that's fine because well they're they're like kind of busy, but I would have. I had this image in my head of the perfect scene between them, where she's grateful to see him, but then she slaps him <laughs> and says something like, "We'll talk later." I kind of like um, some of the, the the misdirects that they had in the trailers, like. The main scene in the the first trailer where they're all running and you have like the Hulk behind them in Wakanda, that scene never happens. Uh, also, like the part where like Spider Man and Stephen Strange are talking in the actual movie, you see Iron Man behind them, you know, like that whole like um, proje- projection of where the ship's flying to. Hmm. I like the little like changes between the the that they had to hide because like it would right. be spoilery otherwise. Oh, and in the very first trailer, Captain America doesn't have a shield, doesn't have the arm things either. Oh, that's true, yeah. Then the second trailer, they added those in, you know, the the Wakandan things. I didn't, I did not like his his arm thingies. Yeah. I, I kind of wish that, like, I wish they would have combined those arm thingies with a new shield that just doesn't have the red, white, and blue on it. Mm, yeah, right? yeah, like a a new frisbee. Because that's kind of iconic Captain America. I don't know. Uh, they're, they're, at the end of the day, I think we can all agree, good movie. Yeah. Go see it. But how awesome was it? Captain America himself could keep, base, you know, Thanos, you know, had his, had his gauntlet hand out. You know, so Captain America's holding it up, and Thanos is like, wait, what? How is he holding my arm up like this? He, he kind of had this expression on his face, like it shouldn't be this difficult to, you know, close my fist. And yeah, go, like, like you're you're an insignificant ant. How are you stopping me? So yeah. maybe not easily, but you know. But you're you're stopping me from doing it. For for the record, the uh, uh, what do you call it? The estimated gross worldwide currently in one weekend, six hundred thirty million dollars. Damn. Eat your heart out, James Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> this could be the two billion dollar Avengers movie. But we don't know yet because second weekend is very telling of any movie. If not this movie, the second one will be. Yeah, How long before probably. now and it's only like a couple of weeks until Deadpool two comes out, isn't it? Uh, like May fifteenth, I think. Yeah, it comes out pretty yeah. soon, and then Solo comes out on the twenty something. Oh, uh, casual. Uh, you all saw the Deadpool two trailer beforehand. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There was so, a, I you guys had a Deadpool two trailer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, a new one. Oh, I didn't see it. Shit. So, uh, so basically, there was a funny bit in there. That I'm like, oh, I hope Stacy saw this because he's he's gonna hate this. Um, <laughs> Mr. Cable's talking; he's all like doom and gloom and stuff like that. And Cable's oh, like, yeah. "Wow, are you part of the DC universe?" Yeah, he's like, "So dark. <laughs> you sure you're not part of the DC universe?" I love that bit uh, so much. Yeah, 
But the I, I will tell you the scene that I liked, and I really hope they do something more with it. Was uh, it was it was one of those recruiting montage things, which I just really fits Deadpool. And they had the the guy at the end that was like, "Oh yeah, the, uh, Paul, my, my name's name was? my name's Steve." Oh yeah, and Steve. And they were like, uh, "And what can you do?" Uh, nothing. I just saw the ad. And yeah. Deadpool's like, you're in. <laughs> yeah. His name was uh, Peter, and there were plenty okay. of theories that he actually does have powers. Well, just, either just way, it was just... It, it just so fit the... De- like, unlike Jurassic World, uh, and I think... Uh, well, let's... let's are, are we done Infinity Warring? Uh, I think we've more or less covered everything. Now it's time for Infinity more. Peace. <laughs> Well, what I was going to say is there, there's two movies that are coming out. One of them, each trailer makes me more hyped to see the movie, and that's Deadpool. The first trailer, I was like, yeah, okay. The second trailer, I was a little bit more into it. This latest trailer, while I'm a little bit unhappy that uh, it revealed even more things that could have been left for the movie for me to laugh at... Mm-hmm. I st- I want to see it even more now. Like I am so ready to see Deadpool two yeah. after I've seen Infinity War for oh, about yeah. the third time. I've um I've seen like theories and and this is literally just based on one split second scene in the trailer. I've heard theories that there's going to be the Juggernaut in the movie. Wait, like Ooh. the X Men Juggernaut? Like, yeah, the X Men Juggernaut because Colossus fights Juggernaut in the comics and. There's this one split second scene in the tr- one of the trailers where he looks like he's punching into like a helmet esque thing that looks like the Juggernaut's helmet kind but, of. I, okay, I, have, I didn't pay that much attention. Oh, it, it, it's the internet doing what the internet does best. Colossus and... is Colossus is definitely in the movie and getting his yeah. self punch through things like in the first one though. Yeah, it, it, it's show... like I said, it's the internet doing what the internet, the internet does and yeah. spinning off fan theories on split second scenes. To me, the real question would be this. Is it the real Juggernaut, or is it the shit they created for, uh... No, if, no. if, if it's in Deadpool, it's going to be the real Juggernaut. Yeah, like, no. uh, they're not going to make that mistake again. Thank but Christ. one yes, thing yeah. I will say, based on the trail, based on this latest trailer especially, I think Cable is the villain. I think he's the guy that they are fighting in this movie. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I would also be sure to point out Cable is Thanos. Yeah, that true. is true. Uh, Josh Brolin is both Cable and Thanos. I always had a theory that um, if you see an actor, the same actor in two different movies, it's the same character but in different universes. <laughs> there, there's actually been people. There's like like certain character actors that they're in like everything, but you can't really name them. There's people that have put together. Like, okay, this character, here's their life as told through all these movies. Like, oh yeah, yeah this one I, they're a superhero, I this like one they're a senator, sometimes. stuff like that. Like like I like to say that certain certain connect certain movies are just all connected in the same universe because this actor played all the same roles. Like like Matt Damon is the same he's not the same person but he's his the movies he's been in are all the same universe connecting the martian interstellar and jason uh, Bourne, saving private ryan because yeah. in all of those movies he's being saved yeah that was a funny joke for a while how much money have we spent saving matt damon <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'm I'm I while I'm excited to see Deadpool 2 now even more like definitely can't wait for it to come out. I am not excited to see Jurassic World. You were not every, excited from the first one. Now you're even less not excited. I I have seen 3 trailers for Jurassic World now. 
Uh, not because I'm actively seeking them, just because they're on when I go see a movie in the theater or because we talk about that kind of stuff, so I watched it for the podcast. And the first trailer, I was like, ugh, looks just like the previous movie. The second trailer, I looked at it and said, oh my word, they gave away everything and it looks even worse than the previous movie. The third trailer... It looks like some sort of horrible mishmash between Jurassic Park 2, The Lost World, and Jurassic World, which was terrible, both of them. And it's like every trailer I I want... I not only don't want to see the movie at this point, I wish that I had enough money to pay people not to go see it. So it won't make any money and and it'll die. So that trailer is having the opposite effect, the opposite intended effect. No, for you. Is. Me too. Just, Jurassic World is just like, eh, okay, whatever. And I was laughing about it. I looked at Ryan. I was like, wait, didn't they already do that in the last movie? Make a dinosaur that was super powerful? He's like, yeah, they did yeah. it again. I went, oh, why? Well, oh, yeah. They're also bringing dinosaurs off the island into our world. Didn't As they casual. do that in like two or they three? They did that already. Jurassic Park 2, yes. It gets worse. They are. They did... Uh, okay, so if you haven't seen Jurassic World, don't. Uh, but part of the plot line was they were training Velociraptors to be military assets. Oh. From the third trailer, they are actually still moving forward with that ridiculous plot and... They're actually selling dinosaurs to the highest bidders so that they can turn them into military assets. This is what happens when you take the DNA of a dying movie series and try to clone it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus That's Christ. right, folks. He said dino DNA. <laughs> you know, uh... Jurassic World is not going to be good unless it has uh, Mr. DNA in it. Please, bring back that character. He's the key <laughs> to the franchise. Mr. Uh, DNA. Finds a way. God, they are so going... Uh, good job for Jeff Goldblum for getting the paycheck, but... ugh. Was he in the newest one? He's going to be in the new one. Why? Just so Welcome bad. to Jurassic World. Yes, he says that line. So they are linking the two universes together after all? Yeah. I thought much. for the longest they, time they said they weren't going to. No, they've all, the, they've always been linked. Oh, the, I was the, always told they were original in in Jurassic World they were on the uh on the same island as the original park. It's set, basically Jurassic World is like 10 years later or something like that after all the events of the previous movies have occurred and they still even after everything that happened they still opened a, a park there. But, well the, the basic story is like you know Hammond actually kind of had a good concept just bad execution we could do it better <laughs> yeah it, it, world. literally not taking any uh, yeah it is stupid now, so, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to mention one more movie that I saw a trailer for, which the first trailer we talked about and how it's early and how uh, maybe they'll do something better. And that's Venom. Yeah. And we didn't get much. Of, we didn't get any Venom in the first trailer. Well, we got Venom in the, net, in the second trailer. Yeah. Um... Uh. Uh. Uh, I, I, don't I, know. I kind, I kind of like the way Venom looks, uh, but I will say, whoever who's playing the, the Eddie Brock dude, uh, Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy, Tom yeah. Hardy, yeah. I don't like his acting. The the way he's like, he's doing like the whole like, crazy. Your voices in my head. It just he sounds like he's not trying. Uh, actually, okay. he sounds like he's trying to be American. Maybe if they yeah. gave him a cup to talk into, so he could echo his voice back, he'd do a better <laughs> job. Here's what's gonna happen. Venom is going to look awesome. Yeah. He's going to move. He's going to... Venom is, himself is going to be pretty cool. The movie is going to be a pile of crap. 
I I actually have a different opinion on that uh, because they did show Shocker. Venom, very very much of Venom. I do like That's his it. voice. I do like Venom's voice. Yeah, I, I'm okay with like a lot of what they showed of Tom Hardy using the Venom suit to do things. Reminded me of a video game called Prototype. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that last image of Venom on in the trailer reminded me of Spawn. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. I like the, the oily look of his skin. Like I get he's a, like a, a symbiote. Also, the the way they say fucking symbiote in that movie. What symbiote? Uh, yeah, symbiote. they they did say symbiote. No, they said symbiote. Well, whatever. It's uh, tomato, technically tomato. that is an acceptable pronunciation for it. Not for but comic really, fans. They're using that because it's different. It's edgy. Now, I'm still hoping that we get Infinity War. Uh, it, whatever they're going to call the next one. Let's, in fact, let's call it Avengers Disassembled. I like that. I don't care what it is going to be titled until they give us the real title. Uh, Marvel sponsorship, please. <laughs> um, in in Avengers Disassembled, I still am hoping that somehow the black goo that becomes the symbiote comes from space from this these events. Yeah. I don't think it will, because they're trying to be separate but also the same. And they have confirmed that Venom is definitely a part of the MCU, because Tom Holland's Peter Parker is going to make some kind of an appearance in yeah. it. I did hear that um, the next Spider-Man movie is going to have a female villain. So I'm thinking Black Cat, potentially. Which they Well, have. that's entirely possible. They're trying to do a Black Cat Silver Sable movie on yeah, Sony's yeah. side. I'm Which sorry, Black Cat gets destroyed by Spider-Man. Well, this version yes, of Spider-Man. But Black Cat's power is, if I'm not mistaken, she's like anti-luck to people around her. I might be thinking of another character. There's I don't remember. A million of them. Anti-luck? You're thinking of a, of a yeah. Domino, I think. No, Domino is luck. Domino's power is luck for herself. But, like, if I'm not mistaken, Black, Black Cat has a power, and what it is is that the reason she's a loner and the reason she likes Peter Parker is because her power is anti-luck. Like, literally everyone around her suffers because of her power. And because of Peter's spider sense, he doesn't suffer. Like, he can avoid whatever things her power is causing, and so she develops a bond with him. It may, I might be thinking of a different, like, maybe a one-shot or something, but... As far as I can recall, that's she is the black cat that crosses your path, right? That's I just like, really want to see that uh, tight black leather suit <laughs> with the with the. Well, yeah, I think that would still fit, even in the the more female friendly cinematic world we live in. I mean, they did it for Black Widow. Why not? I really like that. That, well, anyway, <laughs> we're, we're so, past that topic. Since this whole whole podcast has been about movies, you know, movies that we want to see, who's ready for the 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 biggest movie of the year, Megalodon? <sighs> <laughs> now, I'll be honest here. Like you, you, you guys mentioning it is the first I've heard of it. To be honest. You should see the trailer. It's great. Oh, it's fucking vomit worthy. <laughs> I I agree. Exactly. Okay. That's what I mean. So it, it's called the Meg, and it's about a megalodon. Which, if you don't know what a megalodon is, it's essentially a giant great white shark. Like it, when I say giant, like the kind of shark that can eat an entire ship. Yeah, it's it's a great white shark that's literally the size of a bus. It's now extinct. It's a prehistoric animal, in case anybody's wondering what well, it like, really is. It's it's silly yeah. that they're going for this, of all things. I'm like, oh, come on, for fuck's sake. Now, here's the thing. Jaws came out in 1978, 1975. 75? Wow. 
That's right. Jaws 1, 1975. Jaws did two things. It scared people off the beach, like literally. Literally did, yes. Like beach uh, tourism went down after that movie. Way down. People were angry at George, uh, not George Lucas, uh, Steven Spielberg and the production company and oh, all of this stuff. It also was a huge summer blockbuster. It was the, it is considered the first summer blockbuster. It made so much money at the time and it set a new standard which is kind of being reset back to winter now. But what people forget about that movie is that it wasn't about the frickin' shark. It was about the characters that were going to hunt the shark. Also, it was Moby Dick. It was about finding a bigger boat. It was a character drama. And what made it so good was that the interactions between those three characters and how they were, you know, it it was just a character drama that just happened to be revolving around them trying to kill a shark that was horrible. Ever since then, and that includes all the sequels to Jaws, it's been about the shark. That's why they all fail. I thought they failed because it was in 3D. Well, that too. Which... By the way, for those listening, Jaws 3D is considered the worst of the bad Jaws movies. Possibly one of the worst 3D movies, too. Just awful. I'll reiterate my point from the start of our um, little setup at the beginning. I want to see Jaws on a plane. Yeah, basically, uh, I was saying that Jaws or or the Meg is going to be more like Snakes on a Plane or Sharknado and less like Jaws. The first. I don't know. It's got some stiff competition from Deep Blue Sea. Here's the twist. Jaws is the one flying the plane. I, I think The Meg is actually a uh, backdoor prequel to uh, Kevin Smith's Moose Jaws. Fucking <laughs> Moose Jaws. <laughs> it's Jaws if it were made in Canada, eh? Yeah, it's literally a moose terrorizing the local area. It's somewhere in Canada. Have you ever fucked with a moose? Eating people. Those bastards terrorize some shit. Let me tell you what. Seriously, don't <laughs> fuck with a moose, man. They're mean as shit. <laughs> yeah, Australians would say the same thing about koalas. Well, they, those little, no, they aren't mean. They're just they just piss on you with chlamydia. Uh, <laughs> please tell and me. And look at that! Look work. at that, folks! We made it. What we made it ninety minutes before we had an off color joke. Congratulations! You're welcome. I think that's a new record. I don't think we'll ever beat it again. You said, and since <laughs> since we have a disturbing lack of this, dick, cock, penis. And I think that's a fantastic way to end this podcast. Jesus H. Christ, Rad, you drove us into the ground. I love you, you bastard after my own heart. We have been the Odd Pod. Thank you very much for tuning in. Who the hell were you? You you queer, weird, crazy, que- queer. Oh, what, what was queer. that? What were you talking queer. about me earlier? Attacking people personally? What, 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 what was that? <laughs> I meant to say weird and crazy, but it came out as queer. Oh, okay. It's, it's a Ryan. new word. It's, it's, it's in the dictionary. Look it up. Oh, okay. I will. I, when I get home. Yeah. I'm Ryan. Uh, I'm Robbie, and I just Googled Infinity Stone anal beads and I was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really disappointed, too. Rule 34, pick it up. Come on. You've been listening to KRHC Radio, Rad Hazard 1. Jesus. I am casually challenged, and I talk a lot. Thank you very much for tuning in. You all have been absolutely amazing. We'll catch you next time.